Okay, so Saturday evening, still winter retreat. It's just a, there's about a, a week left of the winter retreat, so it ain't over yet. I mean, lots of people look forward to the one time a year when they can take a, a one year retreat. So, so we've got a week left after. So there's still lots of time left. So just to yeah, don't uh, don't let the time slip by. Uh, use the use the last period of time really, you know, skillfully. It's an 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 important period of time. It's also like the uh, uh, you know, as you you know, in the similar to the you know how you begin something. Uh, conditions its efficacy or its benefit. You know, also how you end things has a uh, uh, conditioning factor on on. Uh, so, sort of like just uh, bringing a lot of uh, yeah, skillful attention, wise attention. Yoni so manasigara to to wisely attend to uh, how one is is kind of wrapping up this winter retreat and drawing it coming to the end and and uh, and even as it ends uh, it's it's not as if practice ends that's for sure um that's this is a it's just the beginning of the rest of our lives but 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 still that that attending attending carefully to you know, how one is is uh, what kind of energy one is bringing to the to the, uh, uh, the the this remaining time. And this evening we chanted the fire sermon, and uh, and this is one of the kind of a, a cardinal sermon of the of the Buddha. Uh, very important teaching that the Buddha gave at the uh, early days of his dispensation. And uh, there is a, um, say, the refrain through, the, or one of the refrains through the, through the discourse is a, just a reviewing of the senses, the sense bases, and, and, uh, but to be looking on that uh, experience of sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, uh, mental objects, uh, the eye, ears, nose, tongue, body, mind, the consciousness that arises, feeling that arises in condition with the consciousness, the, the, uh, the contact that one has, uh, in a way that one is arousing a quality of disenchantment. Nipida, nibindati, which tas mimpi nibindati, this over and over, very repetitious. But that uh, bringing disenchantment to the uh, to the heart, and sometimes it's it's uh, you know, especially as it, you know a framework of the Buddha's teachings. Sometimes our uh, the, say the language is doesn't. You know, it's hard to convey what the Buddha is is expressing. You know, probably in any language, but certainly in the English language. In that, uh, when we think of, you know, disenchantment, um, you know, there there can be a, you know, a sense of almost like moroseness or uh, or a a, a kind of a sadness. That comes from this, or and you know, with disenchantment, dispassion, um, the sense of not having that kind of spark in the heart. But that's that's not really at all what the uh, uh, the, the the flavor of the, what, that the Buddha is pointing to. That sense of Nibbida and 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 viraka are cool, bright qualities of of the heart, and that's a source of 
happiness, well-being, certainly well-being, happiness, uh, again, is when we use the language of, say, from a Dhamma language into the English language or to a worldly language, uh, sometimes it's it's hard to convey that because even the the kind of you know the happiness that most people seek uh, tends to be pretty messy. Whereas what the Buddha is is a general, you know a real happiness comes through seeing things clearly and and bringing a pure, peaceful heart to what we're doing, and then this this happiness and well being is a uh, a kind of a, a steadiness, an unshakability. And that's uh, you know, something to be reflecting on. How, uh, you know, how, again, how do, we, how do we come to the end of a retreat or, come, or just a, at any time during retreat or during practice, during our life? You know, what kind of, what kind of emotion are we wanting to nurture because we we tend to be, you know, we tend to move towards the pleasant. We shrink away from the unpleasant uh, and dulled by the neutral. And in, in terms of you know, what is it that is actually of a liberating quality, you know, has to be far beyond that, and and to be um, recognizing that that the this cultivation, this the, the practice that we're doing, um, is is refining the uh, refining the emotions of the of the heart, and it's like the uh, the very first verse of the uh, Dhammapada, the, the Dhammapada being probably the most popular, most translated of the, of the Buddha's words. Um, and, uh, and the very first verses are, yeah, concerned with the heart. Phenomena are preceded by the heart, ruled by the heart, made of the heart. If you speak or act with a, with a calm, a bright heart, happiness follows you. Like the shadow that never leaves, and it's a, you know, it's a really beautiful image. Of course, the the opposite is true as well. The corrupted heart, um, suffering follows one, and it's like the, uh, the, the like the tracks uh, following a, an ox cart. But to to the sense of the the result that we experience. Uh, is based on the quality of heart that we bring to uh, to to what we're doing. Uh, so to be really attending to that, and, and that's of course whether one is um, doing formal meditation or or we're doing our chores or, or um, having a meal or engaging in conversation with other people. Yeah, we're, we we are we are conditioning. Uh, what we are going to experience and how we experience it, so to be attending closely, bringing that calm, bright heart uh, to what we're doing so that we can experience um, calmness and brightness and happiness and well-being. Because uh, it's what we are, it's what we, we, we wish for. So that sense of uh, you know, paying attention to how to develop that, and it's it's a uh, say what our meditation, I mean, our, you know, our daily life, our practice, our training, and then you know, in the the, the English vernacular, then we we talk about our meditation, but you know, the Buddha never really, there was never. His is the the major the, the main word that he used was bhavana, which is not so much like a formal. I mean, it's part of it. Can be can certainly can be part of it, and is a part of it. Uh, formal sitting meditation or formal meditation training, uh, but it's 
it is bhavana is literally it means bringing to bring in bring into being and more like it's oftentimes translated more like cultivation and development and so that uh, cultivation of uh, the the qualities of of body speech and mind um, which of course are conditioned by the you know, what kind of intention we bring to it, what kind of care, and uh, what, what's the state of the uh, the, the heart the, that we bring into what we're doing. So uh, really cultivating an alertness as to, to, to what, we're, what, we're, what we're bringing into being. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it takes, uh, you know, real, really ca- a lot of care and attention and, and effort, but a, a, a circumspectness and, and uh, intelligence as to what we're doing. You know, and the thing, when we think of the word to cultivate, you know, it's like cultivating a garden. And you can't just sort of, if you're going to have a garden that's going to produce food for you to, to, to eat and create a, a nourishing meal out of it, you are got to pay attention to what kind of seeds you put out there. Um, you can't just sort of look at a patch of ground and say, here's my garden, and you know, hope something's going to come from it. Uh, you've got to, you've got to prepare the soil. You've got to, you've got to pay attention to the seeds. You've got to plant them properly. You've got to look after them. You've got to care for them. Uh, you have to harvest them at the right time. And so then it's, so in, in a similar way, you know, we have, we've got to pay attention to all those details of looking after our hearts, cultivating our heart, bhavana, meditation is, 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 a, is a much broader term than just sitting down and watching your breath, or, uh, sitting down and reciting a mantra of some sort. It's, it's uh, much, much, much broader. Oh, it comes to mind is something that was uh, um, last week when Ajahn Kurundamo was doing the readings. Uh, one of the one of the readings that he did was from the uh, Majima Forty Four Maha uh, the uh, the Jula Vedala Sutta, the uh, discourse on questions and answers. Uh, that was. Uh, uh, questions of the Bhikkhuni da Medina that she was answering um, from the layman, Wisaka. And one of the questions is, you know, you know what is concentration or what is samadhi? Because, you know, in terms of meditation, uh, where we are developing our meditation. We're interested in cultivating this meditation practice, uh, and and uh, the Bhikkhuni Dhammadina's answer was very. It's always resonated with me. Uh, is that that uh, unification of mind is concentration or is samadhi. Ekakata uh, jitta is 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 the, the, the or one pointedness of mind. Uh, although I I much prefer much prefer unification. The uh, that one pointedness I think is misleading because it tends to then you start trying to hold the mind in a place where nothing else is there, and the whole point of Samadhi is the mind is actually working together with itself, and it's it's integrating its experience of of things around. It's it's relying on 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 memory to inform on. It's it's reflecting. It's investigating at the same time. Uh, so it's unified. It's it's functioning smoothly. Uh, so unification of mind is 
uh, samadhi. And, and then the four foundations of mindfulness are its themes, um, four right efforts are, are its requisites, and any cultivation, development, paying attention to uh, any of these qualities is its is its development is a cultivation of uh, of uh, of samadhi. So it's it's uh, just that that sense of really um, recognizing. You know, how do I unify the mind? How do I? How do I allow the mind to to work together? A lot, you know, and so much of it is is uh, yes, we have the, me- the 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 different techniques that we use and rely on, putting the mind on the breath and staying with the breath, uh, recitation of Bhutto or uh, Metta Bhavana or uh, Asuba uh, practices or. Uh, any number of different techniques, but it's it's also how one places the mind. So that that because sometimes we we just try too hard, and the mind gets uh, gets constricted, uh, gets feels too tight, or we're 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 kind of loose, so the mind wanders. Uh, so it's just paying it or tuning into that unifying of the mind so that um, it's like the uh, one of the images that the Buddha gives of, of, of that practice is like of the the goldsmith that is is you know sometimes you uh, you you blow on you blow on it with your bellows uh, you get the fire really going. Sometimes you sprinkle water on it to cool it down. You know, but you you're always keeping a close watch on it. Yeah, because sometimes you need to encourage the mind or or do something that is a bit more overtly effort effortful. Um, sometimes you need to just really slow things down a bit and just cool the mind. And uh, and allow it to settle because it's it's that 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 quality of happiness well being comes from this settled stability of of the mind where one and one's not conflicted. It's, it's again there's a unification. One is not working at odds with with oneself. And it's it's the Calm, bright mind is preceding and carrying through uh, with the attending to the, the the mood of the mind, the feeling of the mind and then and, and in and in recognizing that <clears throat> you're not having to push anything away uh, I think that's one of the big obstacles that we experience is we we, we try to push things away. Uh, like I would be peaceful if only this thing wasn't bothering me, um, and keep um, pushing it away, and and uh, and that's I mean that's actually aversion or fear uh, that is generating that. But it's sort of like just as in the the, the instruction that uh, that the Bhikkhuni Dhammadina said the. The four foundations of mindfulness are the theme of samadhi. Body, you can pay attention. You can pay attention to the body. It's a, it's a valid theme for for, for the for samadhi, uh, and and of course it, there's different aspects of in, in the four foundations of mindfulness that are. Uh, that the Buddha uh, details so the a mindfulness of breathing uh, and, and, and so paying attention to the breath, paying attention to its the whole body, paying attention to calming the body, paying attention to you can as a as a basis or a theme the the, the four po- the four postures walking, sitting, standing, lying down. Um, that covers everything that we do. 
the aspects of mindfulness and clear comprehension, as moving, uh, reaching out, engaging in in different activity, sitting still, uh, the, the you know all right through to defecating and urinating. I mean, it's just everything is a valid basis, a valid theme for samadhi, uh, for unification of mind, for the mind to not be in disharmony with itself. And uh, that's that's the sense of um, being comfortable with what what am I experiencing right now? What is this like? Uh, And so taking an interest in it rather than trying to get rid of something so that you can get something else. And so that, that sense of, okay, this, it's like this. It's like Don Pasamero. It's like this. And it's such a, a useful tool or phrase to, to rely on so that one is willing to just be present, to allow the mind to unify and be settled with what it is experiencing. Uh, and again, there's some, there's obvious, in, in using that same theme of the garden, there is choices you have to make. And there are skillful ones and unskillful ones, uh, necessary ones and unnecessary ones. But that, that your bhavana that you are bringing into be, you're cultivating, you're developing, uh, and, uh, and developing the calm, bright, heart. The 32 parts of the body, uh, just going through the uh, the unattractive uh, aspects of the physical existence, uh, it can be really calming and cooling and settling uh, to this uh, yeah, hair of the head, hair of the body, nails, teeth, skin, Flesh, sinews, bone, skin. You know, the, it's uh, you know going. It's not a value judgment on. It's like, oh, this body has a certain nature. Uh, you know, in the same way that one of the, you know, one of the regular chants that we do. Um, you know, I am of the nature to age. I've not gone beyond aging. I'm in the nature to sicken. I've not gone beyond sickness. Sort of like, yes, there's some, I'm of the nature to die. I've not gone beyond dying. It's just, there is this uh, reality uh, that we can use to pay attention uh, as, a, as, a, as a basis for attention and allowing the mind to unify in a way that is settling and cooling and and uh, brings about uh, a sense of, I mean, of course, this is exactly one of the ways of bringing about, say, that disenchantment that I spoke of at the, at the beginning. But, again, that disenchantment is not to uh, create a sense of uh, disgust or uh, fear or, uh, or anything other than a calm, bright, Heart. Uh, it facilitates the happiness and well-being when it's when it's used when it's used correctly. So that that uh, you know, and again, similar to the, the, with the garden, um, you know, it's like the the image of the garden. Yeah, you, know, you know, what do we use for fertilizer? I mean, it's it's you know stuff that is either old food waste that have been composted or different kinds of, of waste and it turns into something beneficial. Um, so that to, to, you know, we do manage to come up with a fair bit of waste in our own minds. So just learning how to use it skillfully, turn it, turn it to our advantage, um, transform it into this calm, bright heart. And it, it uh, you know, you can be using these different objects, uh, and so like the body as, as the, the elements, which was something I talked about the elements a couple of weeks ago, I think. 
as one of the aspects that the Buddha gives for for uh, uh, as a as a basis for for mindfulness as a theme of mindfulness and in the uh, the cemetery contemplations and contemplations of death. So these are uh, and this is just the body. And so that there's there's so the Buddha is sort of opening up into what is fair game for where to unify your mind around, uh, rather than trying to push stuff away. What do we include? And that's uh, that's actually you know there's a very beautiful way that Ajahn Sumedho has talked about like one pointedness. Uh, in the sense that there's two different types of points that we tend to incline towards, and there's like the tend we tend oftentimes tend to the, like a point that excludes that pushes away, but you know there's a point that includes as well, and that's what we want to be be attending to with mindfulness with four foundations. Uh, of mindfulness as a basis, unification of mind uh, w- with these themes. So they, they uh, and then you realize you got a ton of options to use to seed this mind with, with yeah, the calm, bright heart feelings. Uh, of course, where there isn't a moment. There isn't a mind moment that we are not experiencing. It's a, a concomitant feeling, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, and we're f- the, those feeling that vedana uh, is is a a part of every mind moment. Uh, and then in the Satipatthana, then it's it's you know it is delineating those those three basic vedana but then also looking at it in terms of of the the worldly and unworldly types of feeling because there's feelings that we that we experience the pleasant feeling but then it pulls us off into desire and obsession or uh, you know the 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 sense of craving and but this pleasant feeling that is is uh, it's really settling and and uh, um, and very peaceful. It's, it's it's sort of unworldly, beyond the world. The word that that the Buddha uses is amissa and nirlamissa. Sort of un, amissa is sort of worldly, um, sort of of the world, but it's also what it it's it's like a a bait. On, like a bait on a hook, so that uh, you know, the feeling that has a bait to it, and feeling that this is kind of beyond the bait, or the, without it, without that that uh, that, that kind of hook, uh, that's going to catch one. So that and so that the 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 different types of feeling also you know have the, the, the an inclination in a certain way. So this is. Being very mindful of that, or it's very, very, you know, have as a theme of 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 investigation, you know, the paying attention to the mind. I think similarly, the you know we we want our mind to be still. We want our mind to be silent, and and you know, and, and of course we do. But also. In the, in, it's important to recognize that when the Buddha delineates what those as a as a foundation of mindfulness, and so therefore as a theme of unification, just knowing what the mind is doing, when the mind that is has has desire, one knows it has desire. The mind is without desire. You know it's without desire. The mind has uh, ill will, and know it has um, it has ill will. With without ill will, you know, so like that. Uh, those are the the the, the roots of the greed, hatred, delusion. 
and without then. You know, you know it either way. Uh, when there's a contracted mind, you know when it's contracted, when it's expanded, and uh, you know it is. When it's restless, you know when it's restless. When it's still, you know when it's still. When it's peaceful, you know it's peaceful. When it's not peaceful, you know it's not peaceful. So you, you're not just sort of layering, putting layers of expectation through projection and conjecture. Uh, into the experience of the mind. It's sort of, oh, this is what it is. It's just like this. And the, uh, as a theme of, of mindfulness, theme to be reflecting on, there's this five hindrances, five, five aggregates, six sense bases, um, which was, of course, the, the six sense bases were the theme that the Buddha used in the fire sermon. And uh, uh, even though it's a, a short discourse, uh, it had uh, a tremendous effect because there were, say, a, th- a thousand bhikkhus listening to the to that dhamma talk, and they they were all fully awake and listening to it. So it's a uh, you think it's not just oh yeah eyes ears nose tongue body mind. Psh, okay, now what? Uh, just pay attention. Uh, <laughs> pay, pay attention to our experience. Take a theme and work with it. Unify the mind around it. Uh, bring the, the calm, bright heart uh, in, into play uh, so that, so that you know, truly you know, happiness follows one, you know, like a shadow that never leaves you. So I'll offer that for reflection this evening.